Hey, it's MJSA Mentor Jeweler Joel McFadden. And today we're going to talk about bezel setting. Specifically, we're going to talk about the science of bezel setting cabochons because there's been a lot of discussion about this. So I'm going to show you the way I do it and then we're going to talk about what makes it work, some of the biggest mistakes, and some of the biggest tips. So let's get started. that I use it's called the setters helper and what it is is it's a little stop that sits on top of a of a burr and I specifically like to use inverted cone burrs when I do bezel setting now I know that there's a lot of people that want to come in and try to use a setting burr that's the same size or close to the size of the stone they're using but particularly when you get into cabochons you don't always have a stone that's the right size. Plus, the cabochon has a flat bottom, or maybe a dome bottom, and not a faceted bottom. So you probably don't want to use this burr to set this stone because the bottom's just not going to be right. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut the seat and I actually start all of my bezel settings the same way. First thing I'm going to do is just get the diameter of, this, of the bezel cut right. And what I do is I like to chuck my burr in here and look at what's the depth I want to cut for the seat. And I can adjust this to accommodate whatever depth I want. And I think with cabochons, one of the biggest problems or mistakes that I see younger jewelers make is they try to set them really, really deep. Then you've got a lot of metal you have to push over the top. But we'll talk that about that when we get into the science of this. So let's start cutting. So the nice thing about this tool is it will make it so that my burr always cuts the same depth. And what I want to do here is cut a nice step and create what I call a floor for my stone to sit on. A nice, flat, level floor. So I'm gonna work on this for a second and we'll be right back. With my setter's helper, I've gone in and I've cut the seat most of the way, but my stone doesn't quite fit, which is good. But what this tool has allowed me to do is create a very precise and flat seat and the depth of my cuts are perfectly even. So now I want to take my burr and this is the inverted cone burr I like to use. I'm going to take it out of the tool and I'm going to just by hand trim up my dimensions. So my depth is very carefully set and now I just want to just gently and with it out of the tool it's easy to see where I didn't cut evenly now cutting these bezels this way is not the e it's not easy it takes time and it takes practice but it's extremely effective and it makes for a very easy to set stone and a very nice tight clean bezel so we're going to finish this up and I'm going to show you the next step in just a second So the reason that I like to use an inverted cone personally is you could use a straight cutting burr like a cylinder burr, but I find it, I almost always lean slightly to the outside when I'm cutting. So I find that that little bit of an angle usually works out to be pretty vertical. So I get a pretty vertical cut there. And you can see that we've got a perfect step and here, let's turn this this way
There you go. And my stone should drop right in there. And it does. And it's actually kind of tight. As a matter of fact, a second ago I had a real problem because I pushed the stone in and my seat was cut so perfectly I couldn't get the stone back out. And that's actually not a good thing because um, you need to go clean up the bezel. A lot of times, usually in production, we'll actually polish the bezel when we're finished on the inside. So now hopefully I can take this blob of beeswax here and pull my little chalcedony out of here. No, I can't. I'm going to have to turn it over. And, oh, there you go. So that's out. The next step now is to dress the top of the bezel because our tool has left some tool marks and we want that clean. And we want the top of the bezel to be slightly beveled towards the outside so that as we punch on it, it will punch inwards. And also we want it nice and clean. So I've got the safe side on my file here which is polished, and you can see it shining, and I'll just run that across my finger, or you can run it across your fingernail. And we'll just clean this up, make sure it's all level and slightly beveled. You could use a bigger file if you wanted, but I personally, when I'm setting, I like to do things slowly and a little bit at a time, because I don't like overcutting seats and stuff like that that's trying to do things really really quickly instead of carefully is often what causes problems for people when they're setting now the last thing we want to do is this lip right here which is sharp and a little bit jagged will actually be the dressed part of the piece that sets against the stone so I like to put a very slight shiny bevel on that with a little round buff buff file so that it's nice and clean and neat because when it contacts the stone I want that shiny little surface there and we'll show you another trick in a second so we're going to take some compressed air you can use a brush and get all the junk out of there I'm going to drop our stone in and make sure it's sitting flat on the bottom which is exactly what we want. We don't want it rocking or tilting and you can see it's moving a little bit side to side but it's very very flat. It's because we took the time to make that the, the floor perfectly flat and perfectly even. So at this point we could grab a hammer and we could hammer set this with my favorite little punch here. And you want to be hammering mostly down, down and slightly in. You don't want to be hammering this way. But for the sake of speed, I'm going to grab my inset with my tool and we're going to use this. And again, I'm hammering almost perfectly down, straight down. And you'll notice the bottom of my tool is curved and polished. And you'll notice that it's leaving an almost polished surface here. Whenever, you're, whenever you have tools that are contacting your metal, you want the tool to be as polished as you want the metal to end up being. And this particular metal we're using here is sterling silver.
All right. That stone is nice and tight in there. Now, if you look at the stone, you'll see there's a lot of the stone sticking up through the bezel. And I think one of the biggest mistakes that young jewelers or starting out jewelers, especially with setting do, is they leave the stone way too deep in the bezel. Then you've got to move a lot of metal. And as you saw, it didn't take me a long time to get that stone really set in there. So now we've got a couple more steps. The next one is we talked about dressing the edge between the stone and the bezel. And what I have here is I have my flush setting tool for fragile stones. This is a stainless steel fork tine. In other words, this is the end of a stainless steel fork prong. And it's been shaped very carefully to ride right inside here. And this is one of the great things about having a benchmate is I can actually hold my tool and turn my work. And what this is going to do is just put a little bright edge right around where the bezel and the stone make contact. And you could do it back and forth like this, but with the Benchmate, it's just really nice just to turn the work. All right. Now the last step is I'm going to take my file again. And when I hammered this, I created a little bit of a sharp edge around the outside. So we're just going to gently, carefully burnish that little piece in. I mean, uh, file that little sharp edge down, and then we'll polish this, and it will be done. All right. So now I'm going to polish this, and I'll take a picture of you and sh of it, and show it to everybody what it looks like. So now I'm going to polish the piece up, and we'll take a couple of close-up pictures of it, and I'll let everybody see what this looks like when it's all finished. So here we have the finished piece. I only roughly polished it; I just didn't have the time. It's very important to again not set the stone too low and the graphic here you can see that if you set the stone low one you cover up more of the stone but two you have to move more metal to get the stone secure so on the right side you see the proper height this is how we do the initial cuts with the cone burr and really we're cutting a perfect step and making sure that we get a nice straight even floor that tool is a huge help for this. So this is a great example of how you really want this to look. And then here we have how the stone should sit in the bezel. If you get the stone like this, you're going to be punching at 45 degrees or almost vertical. And that's going to take the least effort to get the stone tight. Here you can see the point is, is to get the stone tight at the top not at the sides and here's a great graphic and here's a couple of examples of pieces that i've done in the past just for you guys to look at hope you enjoyed the video thanks for watching and please subscribe